Um, let me just direct that directly first and then kind of describe what our damage team would do. Um, I, I believe that um, the primary damages will be in increased personnel. About 85% of the typical school district's costs are in personnel. You're going to need extra counselors, should have addiction counselors. Uh, they'll need to be extra teachers. Uh, they'll, they'll really need extra personnel throughout the school system. Uh, damages would also include training for teachers, service personnel, counselors on how to deal with the problem. Uh, there, there are two areas that uh, drive what what we think will be two of the greatest uh, areas of damages. And, and let me caveat that uh, our, our damage team hasn't gone in yet to analyze a county. So what, and I'll describe that in a minute. So I can't project exactly what model they will come up with until they've had a chance to study it. And that's a good question. To it's study it. To piggyback on that. It's, it's there is no model for boards of education yet. None. For the city of Miami or any, uh, obviously. Yeah. No model that has been yeah. Yet. yeah, you've got the Miami School District for uh, their county. And I talked to the attorney that filed there and, and told him about our damage team, asked him what they were doing, that maybe we could share information. They didn't have damage experts. So their they're kind of at the forefront of saying, hey, this is a legal claim. Uh, uh, are, they, are they filing independently or are they filing as a class action? No, they, they filed as one uh, school district, mm -hmm. the Miami School District. Uh, there's another uh, group that may file for Chicago. They're affiliated. Miami and Ohio. And I could say, I mean, as far as is what's happening with the settlement, we right now, are, are, there's a scramble of those that have filed to pull out of that settlement. Our county, for instance, here, the county commission has moved to pull from sure. uh, that class action. So they're, they're, they're going ahead separate from, separate apart from any of that. So they're out of that. And, that, and that's what we would you know, probably need to do. That's, that, that's an excellent point. Uh, depending on how they pleaded and what defendants they named, yeah. a lot of them got forced into this federal court. Right. And um, most of them went, went back out of it, or a lot of them. The, and, can I play devil advocate? Uh, these big pharma companies that are being, you know, paying out millions of dollars, okay? What happens if these large pharma companies uh, decide all to take out bankruptcy? You know, if they all take out bankruptcy, then there is no money. Even, the, you know, the damage has already been done with the market being flooded with, with the, uh, you know, the, the drugs, and then if they, if they drop, you know, you know, because after a while, you can only get, you know, you can't get blood out of a turnip, so you can't, you know, they, they can pay so many millions of dollars, and then eventually, they're going to say, it's not worth us being in business, and declare bankruptcy, and then where does this put the lawsuits and the settlements to all these cities, states, school systems and what have you. There, there is no money. You just become part of the bankruptcy and it's left <laughs> yeah, to the liquidated damage. Distribution. Yeah. 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 Let, so, let, me, let me answer that question and then if I could get back and quickly address okay. that other. No, I tell you, we're getting, I'm just trying to make sure I get it. <coughs> I'm used to standing before a judge that'll let you have it if you don't get every question answered. <laughs> so I'll try to do that. Uh, uh, Pharma has filed bankruptcy, the main manufacturer. It's owned by the Sackler family. Mm -hmm. They are right. all getting named personally. Uh, they've offered around $9 billion and they're handing their company over, and they, they're looking for personal immunity. Well, um, they uh, derive so much money from this that companies, the plaintiffs, aren't willing to let them go for that. But that shows you there is a limited amount of money uh, that pharma has. So you file a complaint, you want to file a claim, 
in that bankruptcy court to get a share of that. Uh, now, a lot of the defendants are, are large, <coughs> large companies. Pharma was a family-owned business. Uh, you've got Johnson & Johnson, CVS. So a lot of the defendants will not only have a huge amount of insurance, but have substantial net worth. But any defendant can only pay so much. And um, uh, now, so how do, you, how do you make sure that you get the money that you're entitled to and get in line and, and um, uh, receive your share? Well, uh, that gets back to the gentleman's question on, on damages. Uh, there will be two areas, uh, primary areas of damage. One are the NAS syndrome, and uh, those are children whose mothers were addicted to opioids when they were uh, pregnant. The, the uh, uh, children with NAS syndrome, if they're at the one end of the spectrum, their behavior is uncontrollable extremely difficult for school systems to bus them. Uh, one in Kanawha County shut the bus down. I mean, they can be uncontrollable. Um, uh, 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 very limited uh, learning abilities and substantial behavior problems. But that's at the end of the spectrum. Now you start coming back, if that's a 10, there are gonna be nines, there are gonna be eights. I mean, this is a, a channel flowing through the school system. <coughs> so uh, uh, identifying them and the flow that's going to be coming for years is a major part of the damages that a school district will have. Another area that uh, school districts uh, uh, have uh, significant damage are parental opioid abusers. Uh, in, a, in a lot of counties, uh, a third, to, uh, 33 to 40 percent of children being placed in foster care are due to the parental opioid abuse. Uh, when you talk to teachers that have faced that, uh, they, they, these children have absenteeism. Uh, they have the trauma from living with parental uh, parents that abuse and then getting changed over to uh, a foster parents. Uh, they may move to a different school district. Before they go to a different foster care, they may be sent across town or to another city to grandparents. So the upheaval from parental opioid abuse is staggering. And in, uh, the American Psychiatric Association has a study that parental opioid abuse causes profound <coughs> effect on the mental wellness of a child. And, and so our, our experts need to prove how does that correlate in more teachers, more staff, that's, that's something that I can't answer. The, one of the things, when, every, when you're talking about damage, I'm just thinking about my son in his classroom. Uh, the teachers say that sometimes there's just two or three students who uh, have, have uh, gone through stuff that's traumatic, dealing with drugs and everything, and their focus has to be on those students yes. so the rest of the students don't get taught. Yeah. So I don't know how that is, how to correlate that in your damage model, but. The damage is not just with that little kid and extra staff. Oh, the absolutely. damage is all those other kids are can't not getting that quality of education because the teachers have to deal with <coughs> these little kids. So it's not just these little kids; it's the entire school. Sure. Because you can't can't focus. Let me give, I'm sorry. Let me give you an example uh, that we can reduce into a to a monetary. Is that this board has created the Back to Basics program, mm -hmm. almost specifically drug babies. I thought that was just a off-the-cuff term. It is no. an actual medical term. I did not realize that. Yeah. NAS. And, and, and this board 
of Education has spent over $200,000 in salaries and or additional salaries, personnel, uh, fixing the, the area up where we're actually utilizing. And it's almost exclusively uh, the Back to Basics program is for those students who are so out of control that we simply can't, uh, we can't uh, deal with them in the regular classroom. We can only have eight. So it appears to me, and I think, Dora, we have the two more uh, uh, postings. So we'll spend well over three hundred thousand uh, dollars, specifically as it relates to this very, very issue. So you multiply that by uh, uh, county, states, and, and what we are dealing with. I, I think we can give you a model. At least we can start uh, uh, a productive discussion. Well, what, what about trans? Like we're sitting there's so over much. There. I, that's what we're saying. We got a whole we sit down of troubled kids because I guess, of this. I guess to bring this back around, we all know, you know, that there's some damages there. We all know what's in front of us. The litigation's there. From our standpoint, it would really not not be smart to not jump into any sort of litigation. That's what I, that's what uh, and it doesn't cost us anything to do that. So we need to jump in there. So I guess it, at this point, rather than because we've gone through this and we understand where we stand, we understand what it is. If I can ask that, uh, uh, you know, through the president, if we can get Dr. Manchin and the staff to put out a, uh, a request for proposal from attorney, you know, all the law firms that would be interested in this litigation and in a fairly short time. I don't want it to be, yeah. you know, a month from now, but if you put, to, put it together where there's, you know, uh, uh, letters of interest in 14 days, we can bring the law firms in and we as a board can interview the law firms, pick a firm. I think forward. there are three firms, if I'm not mistaken, that have been proposed uh, that... Well, but but I, I, I disagree with doing that. We just put it out for all firms. No problem. Because I don't want this, I don't want the school board associations to say, these are our three. Right. You know, I want I want it to be, you know, fair. There, there are tons of litigation uh, specialists out there that are doing this. And no, no offense to you, but... No, 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 no. Yeah, I, you know, I, I want to make sure that, you know, someone doesn't come in and say, well, you know, they had three and they picked one out of the three. There are tons of firms out there. Let's put it out and let anyone wants to send it in. Those three can send it in. There may be 10 or 12. We can interview And I think a, a bit, and that, it's a good point, Gary. It's an excellent point. And, and, and certainly, Gordon, you can finish up here. But kind of a postscript to some of the things you're saying is that really the intent of this evening was to open the discussion and that Harrison County uh, get out front in this whole, this whole process. I know the board feels strongly about that. I think in order... Somewhere down the line, I think the taxpayers of Harrison County would have a right to hold us accountable if we were not in line and there was a some sort of judgment and Harrison County said, well, where were we? Well, we weren't. And that, that's my worst fear, and I, I know I'm speaking for the board, and I certainly don't have to speak for this board. They understand that. So that's what I was hoping to accomplish, it just open up a, a productive discussion, which I thought you, you, know, you, you touched on some of the issues. If you want to finalize some of the, uh, and then uh, per the request of the board, and I'm assuming, Mr. President and the rest of the board, that uh, that uh, Gary's uh, request is, is yes, it, yes. It, and I'll, I agree I'll with that. Okay, let's say you throw it open to ten or twelve. That doesn't no, mean we won't, we, it won't be ten or twelve. We'll just I, I, well, and I'm just I have to sit down and figure it out. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just using the number that he threw out there. But there's nothing to say that we can't come back to. Mr. Lane's company or whatever. Oh, uh, he they, to, so but what I'm saying is the three that are the big three firms that are, I guess, out there that are checking everything out, they probably have got, gathered more information than a lot of individual small law firms. I think what they've done, Doug, it. Doug, and that's a good point. And I, I certainly don't want to speak for Gordon. I'll let him do the speaking. But what they've done is, is they've taken the leadership in, in understanding this is as you can see tonight, we've pretty well cleaned the room out. Where you did an excellent job because it was—it's—it's—it's—it's uh, <laughs> it, 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 it's a very complex. It's a complex issue, but but the issue and and, and I was saying that jokingly, by the way. Hey, uh, uh, I'd it, rather it, have it, clear it, out than be asleep back here. So it's a complex issue, but it is an important issue, and and uh, I I uh, based on this discussion, you've heard the discussion. Is there, uh, and I'm going to let you close, uh, well, Counselor. I, okay, I, I would like to say questions. something for information on this whole thing. And I'm not going to take credit for this, but I was there. It was a board member from uh, Morgantown, Monongalia. We were at a conference where, what was, that, what was his name, Sue? 
Howard Howard Sewer. Sewer. Yeah, Sewer. that was there. And we were at this thing, and the governor yeah. actually had his newly appointed opioid yeah. crisis guy there. The man stood up and said, and, and he was saying how, um, you know, some of these lawsuits, 66 million. And the man from Morgantown stood up and said, are the school boards being compensated in any way with these settlements? And it was like, boom, everyone was like, oh my gosh. And, and then I stood up because they were also talking about the grant program that Huntington was getting that I gave you all. I forget what it was called. That's why I wrote it down. What was that? That all the EMS people hmm. that have to deal and they were receiving this federal grant money. Yeah. So as a conference there, everybody looked at him and said, we want to know as Board of Education in the state of West Virginia, what direction are you going with this? Now, with that being said, you verified that we were the first people at that meeting to even bring it up because there's not even one in the whole entire country. And I really don't think anybody has, as he said, knows how to approach this from a Board of Education standpoint. Do we fall under the county commission? Do we fall under the state? And I just really think that um, we have to understand that there's nobody in the country, as you just said, that has actually come up with a model for a board of education. I mean, not even Miami, the one that did do they, a they file. They just filed. Yeah, that's true. So from this training we were at and a bunch of Board of Education looking at him, that's right when he called you, and I guess he called three other people, and then that's when the three firms called you. And all I am saying is I think as a Board of Education, we have to understand. We know there are all damages out there. The problem is, is nobody ever had the light bulb to say, you know what, the school system is actually the one really suffering. And everybody's thinking state, city, that, you know, that EMS, hospitals. But no one ever really thought about who was really suffering. And I think as a Board of Education, we have to understand every single thing you're saying we're – it's all brand new. Not one single person in the country has done this yet. And we have to keep that in consideration when we look at proposals, or even if they're worth it, if we should be under the county, you know, since our county, what our county, how would that work? Like, say if the county won a settlement, are they required by that settlement procedure to give X amount to the Board of Education? No, X amount no, to the hospital? No. No, no, no. Would be part no of they would be they would be their own, 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 own entity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so the Board of Education is literally not in any one of the state like you know, our state gets sixty six million dollars. Uh, they are required to give the state board of education. A, so the no, board of education and that's what I am saying, it is literally brand new. Change. And we'll be the frontier board of education uh -huh. in the whole entire country doing this. Uh -huh. And and I think we just have to keep that in mind. And this all came from the grant that the EMS and Huntington received. And what is that? And we think our teachers should receive that. They, I mean, I know it's hard on the EMS when they go and they have to revive somebody, but it's just as hard on our teachers when they go in to teach ABC and 2 plus 2. But that's not what they're doing. They're dealing with students that are the victims of this. And that is how this whole conversation started is – how our you know, EMS and everybody else is getting relief for dealing with this, why not our teachers? And I kind of wanted to clarify with you how this all come up, it came up, because I know he called you suddenly after that, and then you called Dr. Manchin, but it's really uh, uh, compelling to me that you're, te or it's amazing to me that you're telling me there's not even a model in the whole entire country with this. Um, no. I, I think uh, that's amazing. I was amazed. I, I'll tell you how I, I came up with the legal theory and and the uh, proposal is that articles started surfacing that the tobacco settlements didn't go toward any uh, individuals that were suffering from lung cancer or addicted to uh, cigarettes or prevention programs. It just got doled out politically to different groups. And there was a general consensus, particularly by the judge involved, that opioid settlements should go to individuals and entities that are directly engaged and directly dealing with individuals that have been affected by the opioid epidemic. 
And uh, I, uh, what, what, what kind of turned a light bulb on for me is uh, when I chaired that task force, I asked if I could attend a weekend teacher conference, just sit in the back and just see what they said were the problems. And uh, at the time, their compensation was low, and we were trying to get that up, and the teacher got up, and uh, he, he taught junior high. He worked two jobs. He had two master's degrees. He had to work a second job so that both his daughters could get through college. And he thought the biggest problem in education was not salary, but he said that he stood in front of um, students <clears throat> and uh, just broke his heart. You see, students that are, have uh, abusive parents, sexually abusive, and what do you do? You can, you can go to your counselor, you can go to Child Protective Services, but uh, ultimately it, it's not a real answer. And so I thought, nobody deals with these problems like teachers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so. Well, that is what uh, all of a sudden, and I have to find out his name for Morgantown because it was just like all of a sudden the room lit up and everybody looked at, you know, teachers were also there, were principals saying, well, I've had to add this many special education teachers since in the last few years. Um, you know, my mind is kind of turning and twisting a little bit here regarding this whole situation. Um, yeah. In your opinion, where do we fit in, or in, in, in any type like, if you were going to file something, what would you file and where? Like, would you file with the state? Would you file against companies? Uh, what, I mean, where would you file? Like, where do you think we fit in uh, for damages? Uh, okay. Let. I think in federal court there'll be a couple cases filed and um, it will be years before a real damage model emerges from federal courts. There, it just moves slow. Uh, and, and I think that um, West Virginia school districts will get lost in the shuffle uh, they're not big population centers. Uh, big national firms are not going to send a A1 damage team uh -huh. down here when the big money is in counties, cities, and hospitals. Uh, it's going to be harder for school boards to prove damages. You, you, parental abuse causes all sorts of disruption to a student. Who who is going to translate that and spend the kind of money it will take to say <coughs> these are the dollar damages from that? Right. It will take a major, major effort. And let, let, if, if I, <coughs> I was just going to say, for instance, that's a little harder to calculate because you, it, it, the model, you have to spend a lot of time. Yes. Uh, but I, as a county commission employee, you know, run the uh, community corrections. I deal with the jail bill. Sure. That's something palpable. I know that yes. at the start of this, our jail bill was a million dollars a year, and now it's two million dollars a year. That's a that's a hard number that sure. is easy to calculate on sure. what the cost of the county is. A lot easier than us saying, you know, the emotional damage. So, you know, I don't want to say that we're going to jump. We may jump out there and get something, but it's not going to be the same volume uh, that the cities, counties, and, and healthcare no, providers. I, I, I think it's going it to be will, a much smaller pot. It, it will be smaller and more difficult to prove. Uh, you're not the big, low-hanging fruit, and and these national law firms, uh, uh, a county in West Virginia, when they're looking at huge counties, cities, a small school district in West Virginia is it's not going to be big on their radar screen. That's why and we're last to the party. So, yeah. so, and that's why I'm asking you, where do you think we fit in? Okay, let 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 me tell you what what. Uh, how I believe you, the best way to fit in. Uh, about four or five months ago, I put together a team. Uh, the, the lead is uh, Dr. Richard Salmon. 
he is, he is, if not the, certainly one of the foremost experts in the country on public school finance. And that is the expert needed. He has done 27 studies on the impact of various factors on the finances of a school district. This will be a study on the impact of the opioid epidemic on the finances of a school district. He's, he's eminently qualified. I, I, when I chaired the task force for Governor Caperton, hired him as our national expert. So I know Dick Salmon well. He's, he's, uh, he's written the, the, the lead textbook and treatise on public school finance. And so he's on board. He's actually ready to get started uh, once we sign up a county. Uh, he's brought in the uh, Alexanders. They have published the lead treatise on American public school law. And so Dr. Salmon has retained the Alexanders. Uh, the other members, uh, and I, I think that uh, a damage expert is great, but unless you've got somebody that knows that school system, that has worked with superintendents for 50 years, and, uh, and knows the public school finance inside out, I don't think you've got a strong damage report. And if, and if you don't have strong damage witnesses, you don't get much money. I mean, if, if defendants look at you and, and say, well, gosh, you don't have great experts, well, if, let's just go to trial. How bad are you gonna hurt me? Well, if, if you're geared up in spades, they don't wanna take that, that risk. And so until you're, you've got a damage report in spades, you're, you're not really on the radar screen nationally, but you, you simply won't get a substantial amount. Now the other two members of our damage team is Dan Selby, who is a CPA. He's been a damage expert in West Virginia for 50 years. He, he to me, is the best and also a statistician uh, that both Dan and uh, our statistician worked on the opioid litigation when West Virginia uh, sued and brought its suit against the opioid companies. So we've got a damage team that has Richard Salmon, the, the foremost finance expert in the country, the, uh, the Alexanders, a damage expert and a statistician that have worked in, that are very experienced and have worked in uh, opioid case with opioid experience. I, I understand that. It, I, think, I think what uh, my question is, and I understand this, or who on your, who's on your team and, and when we accept proposals. My question is, before we even ask for proposals, where do you think we fit in? I mean, I could sit here and say, yeah, let's hire an attorney and let's sue. Who are we going to sue? Where are we going to sue? Where do you think a <coughs> board of education fits in? If not, I mean, truthfully, what we could do is sue the county and not this county. I'm saying if that I county the got mass, a settlement. The mass litigation, uh, yeah, the, for a portion. I'm just saying, where do state, we go? the state. It, 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 yeah. The, the, uh, I, I think you fit in best in the West Virginia Mass Litigation Panel. And uh, let's suppose you file a complaint in Harrison County Circuit Court. Okay. That case will get moved to the Mass Litigation Panel because there are other opioid cases there. There are quite a few counties, cities, and hospitals there. And uh, <laughs> Your, that case will move quickly. So we want to make ourselves, you're saying, a like a sublet. We want to be one of the sub receiving, on a, you know, like under a bigger national umbrella. Uh, I, I, if, if I were, uh, I think your best course of action is to file your own lawsuit 
in Harrison County Circuit Court get moved to the mass litigation panel. They Can you explain what a mass litigation panel is to me. Okay, the mass litigation panel is a panel set up by the West Virginia Supreme Court. It's got three trial judges and three settlement judges. And I've, I've litigated there before. Uh, and their cases <coughs> go fast. So we file a complaint. We get moved to uh, the mass litigation panel. They will set a scheduling order. And so uh, your expert opinions have to be in by uh, March the 4th. And boy, when they say they have to be in March the 4th, they need to be in March the 4th. Mm -hmm. And then the other side has to provide their expert opinions within a certain day. And then you have all these discovery of their experts, our experts. It's an expensive process. Uh, but you will do much better in West Virginia mass litigation panel than, than getting dropped into a law firm that re represents Chicago and Miami. In my well, in my when you opinion. say mass litigation, I wanted to make sure that wasn't like you know a mass settlement, like you know, no. like what Harrison County Commission no. actually pulled themselves out of. No, um, you're talking uh, that is actually uh, a part of the court system. Yeah, that will see what. Okay, yeah. so and once it goes there, then 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 you have to name your experts. Give the other side your expert opinions, uh -huh. uh, your filing motions. They're going to depose your witnesses and our expert mm -hmm. opinions. And it'll all go very fast because part of their goal is to put you on such a fast time frame that it forces the parties to settle. And I think that's I, where that's you'll do That's what I want best. to know is a path. I mean, we can sit here and talk all yeah. day about who's experts, where it is, what settlements. I wanted to know a path, and then you just explained that to me. Yeah. Because there are so many different things and so many different ways that we've been told. I, I do have to tell you, I have, I, I, I'm getting two different feelings from you. Like, you know, obviously we I'm are. I'm not putting you to sleep, am I? No, 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 not at all. <laughs> I find it very interesting. You uh, say that we're very small, we're going to get lost and all this stuff. And, and then at the same time, I hear you saying you have all these big experts willing. And, and so I'm just a little confused on, you don't, we're small and we're going to get lost with all those big national things, but yet there's this whole team. And I, I, I just sort of, okay. I'm, I'm trying to get a vibe for, for the whole thing on, on what you. Okay. Okay. Um, the, um, if, if you go with a firm that is litigating in federal district court, mm -hmm. they will have cities, counties, hospitals where the big money is that they've already got the damages proven. And I think this Board of Education or others are, are, are not going to get a, a real serious damage workup because the money's elsewhere. And these big firms, I don't think, will put the money into a damage for a county board. Mm -hmm. Now, if they do, then you need to find that out. Uh, now, why would I put in money, mm -hmm. uh, which would be a lot of money? Yeah. Uh, I, I believe, and I know the school system well enough, that, and I'm from West Virginia. I, I'd like to see school districts in West Virginia get their fair share. I also need to cover our cost and make money on it. Yeah. So um, um, we, we will bring in a group of damage experts that I don't think anyone else will bring in. And if you're doing an RFP, I, I, you know, I'm happy to participate and I uh, stay completely out of whatever decision process you come mm -hmm. up with and I'd like to participate in that. But, but uh, I think that, uh, to me, the primary question is, you get in, in uh, mass litigation panel, it goes real fast. Who's your damage expert? Who, who's, what opinion can you generate? Otherwise, you're going to get crushed. What are 
they look at it? Like, uh, what time frame for damages? The, it would be at Like a 40 year? Because it's not what damages we had the last two years. No, I mean, We no. still have these kids just enter. Yeah. No, so I, I think year damage you, you, control? you need to look into the future. Yeah. You need to project. And so uh, if you're looking at firms, uh, I, I would focus on every all 3,000 cases in the country have have two issues what's the defendant's conduct that caused this mm -hmm. that is the same for all 3,000 cases uh -huh. the second issue is what damages can you prove yeah. now if you go with the firm they should be able to name their damage experts <coughs> okay. you should be able to call their damage expert hey when when can you start working on our case. Okay. If Makes they sense. can't give you a name, then they really haven't gotten into the damage part of the case. Well, I just, I just wanted to know. Yeah, no, I mean, no, there no. were a that's, lot of general questions, good... and I have to thank you. You clarified everything for me okay. very, very well. Thank you. And Gordon, if I may, right. and, and uh, uh, I, I think small, Kristen, in the sense that if you go to federal district, there'll be a whole bunch. Uh, is it in Richmond? If it would be in Richmond Federal District Court, <coughs> Richmond, Virginia. Well, it, 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 no, right now the the main oh, M, MDL case is still in Ohio, so oh, okay. outside of Cleveland. Uh, They're talking about referring it out. I think in West Virginia, he's generally not Harrison County. I think West Virginia is just a smaller state and and, and would not attract the the same kind of uh, the, the the firepower it's going to take <laughs> for damages and show damages at the federal level. They're going to go to Chicago, New York, and things like that. I think that's what he meant. But listen, uh, I, I think this board has uh, my intent tonight, and again, uh, is, was to at least apprise the board of what's available. I, I think you did, you did an excellent job. Now, uh, the board will give me direction as to what we do and how we do it. I appreciate you taking the time to come up from Charleston. Thank you very and, much. And, and enlightening us. I think that uh, probably Harrison County, the next time you go anywhere, Kristen, you will be the smartest woman in that room when they start talking about opioids. <laughs> I believe that. I, I, I just think we have to ask questions. No, I, 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 think, I, I mean, I think, sincerely, what, what we just now know that we didn't know That's right. about an hour ago. Yeah. But, I, but I still think that we need, if we're going to do something, uh, we still need to put out an RFP. Oh, yeah, listen. And, and, and I, think, I think, Frank, firms. that's my question. What are you going to ask on that? When, when you put out one, what are you going to ask? We're going to ask questions like what, where, like what you're asking. Okay. That, exactly. we'll that's probably same, why we'll I just said that. We'll ask these same, same questions. That's probably why I said them. I wanted to make sure that we were putting out the right the right questions and what we wanted to know. We're going to ask them what their experience is, you know, yeah. what their plans are. What we can I was like, can't you send out a questionnaire? And get, if they're interested, they'll answer the questions if they're really well, serious there are, there are, I don't think I don't know how many the firms are, are situated well, that's what I'm saying. to address you send this to the, issue. But, but if the ones that are, it's rather we'll send them back. Okay, yeah, and then that at that point, then you could because otherwise, you know, they're going to say, well, this isn't really anything I'm interested in. Throw, throw it away. Yeah, but the vast majority but, don't have the firepower. Right. Exactly. Right. So. So. Uh, I think what, even what if we I've send, gained, and we should say <coughs> what. Mr. What Lane I've gained, also. What I've gained from all this is that while there may be an opportunity for us to glean a little bit of money from this, it's not going to be substantial. It's not going to be a very substantial amount. Uh, I, I I wouldn't say that. Uh, I think it will be substantial. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, uh, the reason I, I believe that is because Dr. Salmon and Dr. Alexander know the school system inside and out. Uh, they'll, they, they will come to Harrison County, work with the finance uh, director, and really examine this school system. Uh, I think they will be able to take that American Psychiatric Association. He's done 27 studies nationally. He knows how to do this. The, the, one of the answers to your question is uh, everything in the education system drains money away from the average kid. It's just mm -hmm. kind of the nature of the problems that arise. So <coughs> part of that, uh, uh, I mean, Dr. Salmon knows that well. What, what you're going to need is more personnel. If you've got three behavior problems, maybe they should be in a separate classroom with a separate teacher. Mm -hmm. You've got to educate them. but. What, what their damage expert and what our damage report should do 
would be to compensate you fully for the problems the opioid epidemic causes to you. Now, you get money to educate students, but this opioid problem with NAS children, that's money that's not, uh, not part of educating children. It's caused by the opioid problems. These behavior problems, a lot of them uh, 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 come from uh, drug abuse. That you're going to have to somehow get more personnel to take care of them. Now, that that's that's uh, that's it in a nutshell, and I think that's that's exactly where we are, and that's where we're going to have to. And make I it think the teachers that we have have to be emotionally. Right. And if I can, and if I can ask that to go further, and, and of course, we don't have anything where we can vote on, but maybe a suggestion. I don't know if the board rest of the board even agrees, but there's going to be a certain amount of firms that are doing this and, and, and that will probably uh, uh, apply for that. But in the meantime, I mean, we won't have anything. There, we're not going to have a bunch of money tied up or anything tied up. It's going to come on the back end. But maybe if we spent just a small amount of money on the first one, maybe <coughs> ask, because we use Jim Harris. He's not going to be a person that that is going to apply for that. But maybe he can assist us with with the putting out the RFP and maybe mm -hmm. advising us. I already spoke it to him. As Jim it's sets open. here, because he's not going to be one that's competing, and if we can get Jim to just kind of, you know, let us know what kind of questions we want to ask from, an, from a law firm, uh, I think he could guide us, and it wouldn't be that much uh, expense for him to just assist us. So we have, we have him because it's someone that we've used and we can trust that, that would. Well, let me tell you my honest opinion, and wrapping this up, and unfortunately it will be in the paper, we are very small. But if we're first in the country, we won't be that small. In fact, we'll be the headline on everything. So I think the quicker we act, if we want to go in this right. direction, we need to act yeah. ASAP. And that's my take on it, because we are small. I agree. But if we headline and we're the first, we're no longer small. 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 We're actually the smart ones. So. Right. Um, I just think that we need to take it from there and move on this as quickly as possible. Well, that's why we had uh, Gordon. Uh, thank you. I agree. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you very I, much. Uh, like I said, I think uh, now a little more than an hour ago, we're a lot smarter than we were an hour ago. Okay. So I appreciate you taking the time, and I will, uh, uh, based on the direction this board gives me, which I have some sense for where we are, we'll start moving in that direction. I think that the, we'd like to move with the dispatch. As soon as we can. So uh, mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. Does uh, Dr. Manchin have your, all your information in your law yes. firm? Yes, all yes he does. And uh, if you've got a question, uh, I'll, I'll leave that to uh, the president of the commission. Uh, you can give it to Dr. Manchin. He can ask me. And uh, I know I, I confused you at a certain point. And so uh, I guess my overall, uh, I think that when, when you show up, you're going to have uh, education experts that their experts will know these guys are the real deal. They're, they're the leaders. That, that's where you're going to get a, a, the financial compensation. And, uh, that decision going to be made then in this mass uh, litigation court there? Will that be the decision? Or yeah, you, three you, judges you, 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 file a, uh, you file a complaint. It goes to the mass litigation panel. Then it proceeds <coughs> like any court case. Uh, if others settle, if other school districts settle, you don't have to settle. You can say, we want to go through trial. Mm -hmm. And typically, you don't get a really strong settlement until right before trial. Yeah, and they case. know you have worked up a very strong case. Yes. Yes. Well, listen. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. We'll be getting. However, this whole thing works out. I'll let everybody know. Okay. Oh, thank you. Oh. Thank you. All right. Moving on, we have our first delegation, the only delegation this evening. Uh, Mr. Hamrick and Mr. Sollers, if you guys would be so kind to come and present on the introduction of the freight farm for United High School yes, to support the VOAG program. You may remember me from two years ago. I came asking and begging for a uh, greenhouse. <coughs> high school, United High School doesn't have a greenhouse. And I want to thank you all for uh, approving that greenhouse. 
We got set up uh, in spring of last year. We have one. Oh, well, that, that's just uh, two coffees. Oh. Uh, there are two different coffees uh, explaining the system. And, and our tree. Coffee, uh, the short notes on one of them, I'm not trying to explain to you. You asked for archery too, correct? Uh, yes. How did was, that? It is great. It's part of their clubs. It's gotten students into uh, hunting. It's gotten them into hunter safety courses. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, I'm not directly involved in the archery, but I've spoken with a DNR officer at the Avocado Festival, and he is hoping to come and start uh, I, I don't know a hunter safety course in school yeah. training, and possibly this spring if we can fit in the mm -hmm. curriculum. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the schedule is a little difficult. They fill it fast. They fill very fast. So uh, the greenhouse that we have had, we've been able to send starts, thousands and thousands of uh, garden variety plant starts to uh, home to our students and some of our teachers and their families at no cost to the students whatsoever. This winter, um, I'm from Evolution High School, with Indian High School, so I'm upstairs. Uh, I had students who were having many indoor gardens uh, for greens this winter. Some in their bedrooms, some in the kitchen, some in uh, hallways, because that's the only room they have. And these students, they've never had those experiences in their life before. They're being here to make stories of the old times, and they had to do that. Uh, but the parents dropped that tradition, and I'm trying to get started back up again, and these students have been able to provide food for the families. A little bit. Uh, Mr. Sollers has come on board at United High School with our new BOAG program. He's a half time through uh, Shinson High School and us. And with the uh, consolid possible consolidation of elementary schools and moving of United High School to another uh, location, our greenhouse have set the concrete and rolled it down the campus. So what we're proposing is a mobile greenhouse that can be purchased at any time. This greenhouse would be able to move from one place to another with one flatbed truck. It's a completely contained system where it would hydroponically grow uh, up to 8,800 plants every month. How much can you grow right now? Right now, I have, actually today, those are my first fingernails, we've been planting a, a quarter of the greenhouse right now that will handle about a week's worth of uh, salad. <coughs> right, but could you plant more of the mobile one of than out of the, the station? Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Uh, we've been talking with Mr. C and with the Great Farm representatives for uh, since August. We've had some conference calls, we've had some direct calls, uh, mm -hmm. emails that are very hard to manage. Uh, and <clears throat> Mr. C believes that we can provide 41% of what the schools purchase in lettuce. And lettuce might not be, salad's not a very big popular topic, uh, especially in the schools, but uh, Harrison County Schools, for the five high schools and United programs, spend over $21,000 a year just in lettuce. We would be able to provide 41% of that if our freight our form worked, uh, was operating at 90% efficiency. Uh, I've got a, yeah, a couple questions. One is, is this is great because I think it was, this board's intention uh, with moving the school that we had planned on putting a greenhouse there. Yeah. Uh, however, if you think this is a better solution than the greenhouse, it may be better for everyone all the way around. Uh, I mean, is it a better? That's that's my question. Is are you doing this because uh, with the, with this mobile unit because you don't think you'll get the greenhouse there, or it's better than the greenhouse? No, I, I fully understand the board's devotion to my school. Right. I agree. No, it's not in fear that we won't get a greenhouse. So that's why I'm just asking. I don't want you to be doing this, you know, to think that yeah, we're not going to get it. But you, th if this is a better alternative than the greenhouse, oh, it is. Okay. Or is it a complement? Yeah. In addition to, I mean, if the we were to put the greenhouse there too, you would obviously probably take that as well. But my other question is this: I don't know what you can do because. Uh, once we move to that facility, from my understanding, we're going to have some additional space, correct, In, into Adamston when it goes into that building. We had talked about possibility that we won't be filling up the entire school, correct? Yeah, we don't envision that. So, I mean, is school. there, let's say, the, the top floor there, is that something that, that would be usable space for your program, if needed be? I mean, in addition to this. Oh, 
Sure. I mean, is there? I don't know whether you can grow something there. You know, some indoor uh, grows in those areas or not. We, we can do that. Some of the hydroponic systems that other uh, schools in the county, the agriculture programs have ran, they're they're excellent for the school system. They're right. excellent for a classroom and for experimentation. They're not very good for real life. Okay. I just want to make sure if we have that spare room and there's something where you're producing 40% of our lettuce and there's a way to produce 100% of our lettuce, then we can use that room and grow lettuce, right? Are you, are you limited just to lettuce? No, we can uh, grow all sorts of greens, greens herbs, uh, kale is one of the big things, uh, some root vegetables. But the larger the vegetable, the less space you have within the units. What's good about this is it only has a 10 by 50 foot footprint actually take up. It's basically a storage container. When I first found out about these was last year, I went to a workshop one Saturday to see a lady from, I believe it was, uh, she's from Pennsylvania, speak about the unit that her student <coughs> purchased. She teaches a large school up there and is actually the gifted BOAG teacher there, is the two weeks that she splits. And with this unit, it's state of the art, it's based out of a company in Boston, Massachusetts, that produces them. They are uh, just taking off and it's the future of farming. There are none in West Virginia at all at this point. But it's completely self-contained. It's all computerized to where everything can be electronically monitored from anywhere in the earth, on the earth as long as you have connection and Wi Fi's up and working in the system. You can make your adjustments and things from there. So it will be teaching the kids about the future of agriculture. Plus, you have great control, 100% control over it, 365 days a year. In the past, when I've grown hydroponic stuff in the greenhouse at Lincoln, you're really limited to a small window because once it gets too hot, everything dies. Once it, plus you're having to heat it in the wintertime to keep it going. There's a lot more variables there, whereas with this here being all contained and controlled, you'll have a guaranteed product to go with. You will, be, you will know what you're going to get week in, week out. And this lettuce is certainly more healthy than mm -hmm. organically grown. Yeah. It is organic. You, you, can, you can consider it organic. Uh, the, the prices we're looking at with Mr. C was for iceberg lettuce. Bad boy, iceberg. Yeah, well, I mean, romaine, flavor. it's got salmonella everywhere you turn. Yeah, no, I'm asking it's what you grow is organic. There aren't chemicals or pesticides. Oh, no. <laughs> so what you will be growing is organic. You use these rich cooks and they grow a bunch of grass. Uh, the iceberg lettuce that the county currently purchases is extremely low in nutritional value. We would be growing uh, a lot, what a lot of people call the fancier lettuces, uh, your salad yeah. fruits. My well, with the produce house is, leaving, I mean, I think you guys could get a lot more business because I know a lot of people went to the produce house to, to get that, that stuff. was something else I was thinking about, too. You're only in school so many months out of the year. This system, for a little bit left, or since you got there running and everything, it wouldn't take any more to have it run through the summer where kids could use that as part of their summer projects that they have to do to where they could come in and help work there. Kids that don't have the opportunity to have a garden at home or have things that they can do, which there are several of them out there, have no idea what they would like to do for a project. This could be something that they could be able to do to earn credit towards graduation and to help do it. And you could take that excess product that you're growing in the months that school's not in and either donate to local uh, food banks or perhaps to sell the farmer's market or to local restaurants and stuff. I wonder if you could bring like 4-H in or other people to, to come in there and just, like if we're the only one in the state would have one, bring outside other people in who... who oh, it would be. definitely be a showpiece for the county on this because, I mean, all kinds of organizations can come to see and learn yeah. from it. Is anybody familiar with the Farm Bureau of West Virginia? Mm -hmm. Harrison County's Farm Bureau? Yeah. Harrison County has one of the largest farm bureaus in the county, yeah, in the good. state. Mm -hmm. I've been involved with them for the last two years and uh, going teach your summer agriculture experiences, and they are looking for the government of the state to have more farms and farming facilities and production facilities <coughs> for touring. So that, that's an option. You could have in-house elementary schools. Children can come in from all over the county, plant their salad. They can come, they can harvest, or we can harvest and deliver, they can process, they can make their own salad. 
they can make their list. That's, that's just one other way to show a child that you don't just get all your food from the store. I'm, and I may have from somewhere. missed this. This is mobile, and I may have missed it in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mobile, correct? It is if you keep it on the flatbed trailer. Okay. It, it can be disconnected from the water and electrical <laughs> supply just by unplugging and unscrewing those two utilities and placed on the flatbed and moved and dropped off that other facility. It must be on the foundation of either gravel, asphalt, concrete, something immobile while it's working. Okay. What would it take to supply 100% of the lettuce for Harrison County? It would take uh, just over two units or uh, two units and all of the ag programs have their own smaller hydroponic systems. What? They're, they're much more expensive all together <coughs> aggregated than two of these systems. You're asking for 27.5, or I'm looking at this, I'm a little confused on this grant writing because I was going to ask you about that because typically, like you said, there's one vendor in Ohio. They should have given you a huge list of where you can get organic, green, USDA funding <coughs> for this. Um, and I see on here, we have been in contact, well-versed in writing these grants, just a USDA grant requires 25% of the project. This amounts to 27.5. Is that what you're asking? So and the USDA gives the rest? If we get the grant to apply for this grant, which is the only grant that seems to be available to us to purchase a piece of equipment like this, yeah. for the, the, program, the system itself costs $110,000. That's the software starting installation. They come, they set up a completely new unit. They make custom made for the customer. They deliver and train and set up. That's one quarter of that is required to be covered with an in-kind donation or pledge. So that's what you're asking us for is 27.5 in-kind donation. And we'd have to have that before we would even be able to apply. For okay. The grant. Yeah. Uh, then the net cost of fully funding the project will cost about 80000 That's not us. That's not you. That's, well, that's the remainder of what would be covered by the USDA grant if okay. we receive the grant. Okay, so just to be straight here, what you're asking the board is for us to consider uh, an in-kind donation of 27.5. Yes. Okay. That, I mean, in a perfect maybe. world, the fully funding of this project without having to worry about tying up in a year and a half worth of USDA coming back and requesting more materials from us to be eligible for the grant, mm -hmm. we'd be able to pay off this project with And that would include the $8,820 that Mr. C would divert from spending outside of the state, outside of the country, New Mexico, to purchase lettuce. You can purchase it here. That $8,820 would not be going out of the country, it would be staying in the county. Let me ask, could, is this something like for the school lunches? If we'd save money on buying lettuce whenever they're having salads in there, we could. That we'd save money on that? Yeah, that's what they're saying. They, Mr. Right. C is going to buy off of them rather than buying off another vendor. Yeah, he right. spends over $21,000 just for high school less, not including middle school and elementary programs. We'd be able to buy $8,800 worth of that less. He would purchase from us to, and it would run the system. Any, I wouldn't want to call it profit, because we're not gaining anything out of it. It's just the students in the school system getting out of it. We don't want to die. Any of that excess money. Once we maintain the system and get rid of several new cycle of parts, that money would come back into a park <coughs> and purchase another unit. I'm just curious if you'd have like Panera or another restaurant that could approach I, and see if they'd be interested in it. I will, I'll tell you right now what my concern is, and it's not a negative concern, it's a real concern. Now, I know like being at the United High School graduation that some students were there, some went back to their home school. Uh, you have students at United that are there for a year or two years. Do you, I, I mean, explain, do you have an ad completer there? I, what I'm concerned is you get this and it becomes more of a, a tool for the instructors because you have students coming in and out. Where <coughs> compared to like a Lincoln or a Liberty, you have a four-year program that you know the students are there all four years. That's my only concern with it is that's going to be more of a project for you where a greenhouse now they walk in they see flowers they go home but we don't even know if they're coming back to the school next year correct 
That's correct. Yeah. And, okay, I mean, so they, when I look at something like this, I look at something like this, because we, of course, we're going to put one and would never even consider not having one at United. But don't you really think this is a better model to be at a high school? I think it's just. I think it's better with well, this mean, like because you're, you got a different clientele that you're trying to reach, and you need. That's yeah, what I mean. You know what? It's worth every venture. dime to me that if a kid who's going there that may be, you know, a discipline issue, maybe not. They may be have problem with in a regular classroom, but this is something that they can go to, and it's something they look forward to, and they're doing, and they're taking a part of it. I'm I'm 100 percent. But, but they're doing that now at the greenhouses. That, I mean, we've seen that success. Right, um, but this is this is a. I think for them, they're saying it, it, it would work better, and I think it's unique enough that it, it would excite those other students more so than uh, you're just your typical. Green and I'm not saying that in a negative way. I'm uh, just wondering, as you as an instructor, that here you start this whole project, and then next year you don't even have the same students in there. But you, you know what? So what I'm appreciative of. Well, is that at United High School, we put an emphasis on United High School, and someone who's teaching at United High School has the forethought to go out and, and try to do something over and above what any other high school would do. I, I appreciate I'm in, I'm in favor that. I agree with all that. I envision, I I I envision sure you guys that. being able to supply, if it continues to grow, being able yeah. to supply more lettuce or more vegetables yeah. or, or, or something. I just like that you're not mailing Whatever. it in. You're going out and looking <laughs> for things that are different. Right, right. That excite you. <coughs> so yeah. I'm, in, in essence, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing up Preston County's slaughter yeah. farm. They supply mm -hmm. a lot to their own, their own schools. So I, I think that this would be a perfect model for us that could help us nu nutritionally, mm -hmm. could help our students from a nutritional value standpoint. It could help us save some money over the long haul. And it would be a great educational tool for our kids in the in, in the farm farming farm bureau and VOAC programs. They'd be able to graduate from the VOAC program with the skill, the talent, and the ability to run one of these facilities that no other student with the whole state in West Virginia has. And to come back to those on your question laws. I think it would be perfect for our program because if you have transient students, then you're gonna have students from all five high schools, of the major high schools, be able to come to our sixth high school, not high school from their BOAG classes, take a BOAG class for Mr. Sullivan's, get the experience. So you're not just servicing United High School, because United High School services all other five high schools in the county, mm -hmm. and it's optional for students to attend United High School. Yeah, I mean, I didn't mean it in any negativity. I know we all have greenhouses, but when you're talking about producing, I just don't want it to end up being your, that, that you are handling it more than students, you know what I mean? Because they're going in and out and you're always teaching from ground one. I just wanted to make sure you felt this. That you, I, you don't have a student in there for four years learning and building on it, is all I was saying. I, I just, just I think sure. this is the place to try it out and I envision this at all the other high schools because it's going to be successful. And If you follow the news out west, they've had major floods earlier, mm -hmm. freezes this year. You're going to, I don't know if you've gone through the university lately, You'll notice produce, uh, especially short term small produce like money. Adam, it appears that this board is desirous of help. Uh, do you need the board to take some sort of action, at least show it in the in the board minutes? Well, I would request that you put this on our next agenda to put a vote for the funding. Twenty seven five Well, I don't think amounts. it requires funding, but it requires a commitment. Commitment. And, and speaking commitment with of funding twenty seven thousand. $500. And uh, well, with speaking with our finance department back here, just kind of off the cuff, apparently there may be $10,000 from the CTE. There is. The CTE that can be committed to that, so we're only looking at 17. I yeah, think it's and, a no and please don't think that I was negative in my comment. Oh, I mean, I think this is a fabulous idea, and I definitely applaud everything that they've said. I just wanted to make sure with students coming in and out, it wasn't too much of an undertaking for you. It, you know, with all the computer and 24 surveillance and all that stuff. So you you're, you're asking for a commitment from us of 27500 to get the project started. I'm asking that, and it's, it's very on time. I don't understand some short notice, mm -hmm. but December 13th is the deadline. Go forward. That's, That's why we came here tonight. Yeah. I think, when is our next board meeting? December 13th? 17th. 17th. <coughs> Do we have to take a vote <coughs> for <coughs> commitment? <coughs> uh, I mean, it's just a commitment. It's not yeah, funding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. What's it? 
It's I mean, a I think you have that within your purview. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about this, Adam. They were in my office the other day, and that was that was part of it. That because the board, if the board made it, because quite honestly, the board, when we they, they, that grants. reflects, and then they'd have to make a commitment. If you get the grant, then the commitment for the fund. Just a commitment, and I think I think the board minutes probably would reflect that this board made a commitment. But but yeah, all I'll say is is with any grant, the superintendent. You direct your staff to go forward with the grant and then come for the funding afterwards. That's so, my point. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so you have the ability to yeah, say, so yeah, go forward and file for the grant and then we'll work. Well, back. actually, when, when we talked the other day, and that says we're coming to make sure the board's okay, which I think they are. I, we don't I would have every grant file. I, I, no, we don't. But I would officially like to vote on this on an agenda item All right. specifically. All right. um, I, hopefully, you can start your filing for your grants. I, I don't think there's any problem. With that, as you said, uh, but I want enough. I would like to yeah. have an official well, I vote. Think, yeah, if he gets the grant, then for the, money. the board but has to make sure the, the next board, board meeting. So he really can't. No, he's going to go. He can file for the grant. We've already talked about that. With the plaque. <coughs> well, good. that's all we're saying yeah. is a plaque. We're good. Yeah. Here's one second. <laughs> we don't. Now, I think if we were doing the 110, that would be a different story, but he's just asking for a pledge. Of what, 17.5? Well, no. yeah. No. Time, you know, this green. 27.5. No, there's she well. said there's 10. Yeah. Well, for, for the total we'll of 25%, average grade down to 17.5 or the 10, you're fine. Just make $27.5. Once the grant application goes in on December 13th, it will take one year before they award the grant. And then after that, a purchase of the unit will require six months lead time from the purchase of the unit like, to the delivery and the functionality. So we're looking at over a year and a half. So we're not going to get a test salad until next year sometime? In, in two years. Two years. <laughs> <laughs> and we wouldn't appropriate money from this year's budget. We'd have to take credit right. next year's budget. Sure. Anyway. Well, I, yes. I, I was thinking of that. If yeah. we did we that, get you, get you moving quicker and get it, mm -hmm. and then... But do, uh, I don't know if that would impact a grant if the money was already been funded. That was the only thing I would think. Yeah, you yeah. couldn't buy it and then get... get uh, and then get the grant and pay us <laughs> You back. can ask them. If, Actually, yeah. yes. <laughs> but the, the other question is, we don't want to get it now, put it on a pad, and then move it. Yeah, we wouldn't that's do that. True. Yeah, we would. That, that's, that's. I mean, that's a consideration based on whether we get funding in a week or so. Which so is just a couple weeks. So just hang in there. We'll, we'll figure <laughs> that out. Uh, but if you do find out in the meantime that after that move we'll and, and the grant's coming six months from now, but you're reimbursed if it was paid for, then then I would say come back. I think you're going to get this. It just win. Mm -hmm. But like I said, again, I applaud you because mm -hmm. I think coming with something like this and, and researching something that's over and above what other schools do is what we envision from United High School. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your support and questions. Thank you. All right. Good job. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Okay, superintendent's update. Mr. President, we talked today and I don't have any updates you All right, moving on. Uh, I know that upsets you. Consent items. Is there an approval for consent items? So Mr. moved. Mr. Hogue has made an approval, has made a motion to accept. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Hamrick has seconded the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I'm sorry, I moved on. <laughs> Do you have an update from you? Uh, no, it was something that I discussed tomorrow. with you earlier. I know we were doing the uh, lawn mowing services, and I was discussing with Frank on our way down here. When was the last time did we bid out our insurances? Mm -hmm. And we could not remember it since we got on the board six years what, what six years ago. What insurance? Are Building insurance, all of our insurance. So our liability insurance, we have brand. to go with them. <coughs> okay. Um, I think the insurance we had. out before, but truthfully, no one can ever match. I think what, what you're talking about. I think what she's talking about. Oh, I'm talking about practice. our schools and it's stuff workers like that. Comp, workers' comp. Yeah. Yeah. Are you talking about a, a agent, the agent of record? The when agent we first record. came on, the agent of record, we don't pay, so. We don't necessarily have to bid that out. So. Okay. Well, is there a company? I yes. Mean, are we paying our insurance too? Brim is. No, Brim is our company Brim's for our state. liability and our property insurance. Brim is. Yeah. So when we, we there's no agent. So, so when we came on the board, for a company to compete with the state. Okay. Policy. So when we we first came on the board, the three of us, we voted on Dyer Insurance Group to be our workers comp. agent of record for um, workers comp. Workers comp, but he also does our Brim too. 
He's our agent of record. Okay, I think that's what Ms. Messenger is referring to. Yeah. Is that something that we should reconsider bidding out again? Is that is that a price that we pay them? It, it, we do not pay. Do them. not pay them. Okay. Yeah. It's so, not something that has to be bid out. Okay. So why would we want to change? An offer? So how did he get it? Like <coughs> what? I mean, like what is that process? It's we just randomly chosen. Board, maybe through, before we you got through a process where we <coughs> bid it out every once in a while, but we don't pay anything, and everyone who deals with them is but it's not something that's required but because it's of no cost to us. We just have to have one because of the crazy insurance laws. Which well, why wouldn't we, um, I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, there's a lot of insurance agencies in this county. I mean, to stay with just one, I mean, why wouldn't we just do it just, just for the health of I think the continuity, community, I think, basically. Well, I think the continuity for us is, is, is a good thing. I think you can talk to Mr. Winky. I think he expresses that often. <laughs> but I mean, well, but if you put out anything. another uh, request for a proposal, I mean, okay. can you put on that that you want to combine just like we have it now? A request for proposal. Sure, sure. I'm just I saying, I mean, it was, it was propose. brought to my attention, and I just really, um, I just think it's healthy, just like we did with the interest rates last year. I, you said you were going to rebid that out this year. I mean, we went down significantly by bidding it out last year, regardless of what the end situation was. We went down significantly and made a lot of money off of our, I, I mean, I suggest yeah, we it's not, do it's that. Yeah, it's not something that's cost us any money, so I guess that's why we don't really look at it. Everyone's satisfied with who they're working with, but we could certainly work with someone else. It's just, we've got somebody local back. I mean, it could be him again. It could be yeah. him again. All I'm saying is I think it's healthy for a Board of Education representing the whole county to do this just like the lawn mowing bids, just like whatever. I, I just think it it's something that should be done. Yeah, it's just, it's just hard to put it out for a proposal because they're not it's not costing us anything, so it's hard for them to say what are they going to do because by law we have to have. Do they make things. money off of it? I'm sure they do with the insurance companies, right. but I don't. It's not something that. But we like do. I guess to say, border risk management is Brim. That's uh -huh. the state. That's the risk pool for the state. So we're in that. <coughs> we're in that for the long haul. There's no cheaper than Brim. So mm -hmm. Brim, then they whatever comes from doesn't come from us. It comes from Brim to them. The workers' comp's different. I think we're, yeah, we're workers' comp, but we still don't pay. We them. don't pay them, but it's Brick Street. So, I mean, as far as Brim, I mean, but the agent of record, I think the first time we did it wasn't. It was only for workers' comp. Right. It was. It was. It was. We never could, bid out anything other than work the workers' Yeah, we don't comp. build out bid out Brim. Brim just has a person in your county. Right. Well, well, we were just discussing that. We remember voting on that and seeing, and that we hadn't seen it in six years. Yeah. And Ken has been very happy with what we have, so that's why we haven't done anything, I guess. <laughs> I, I just suggest representing the whole county and taxpayers that we do that. I, I mean, I've done it on other issues, and I'm going to do it again on this, yeah. just, just because sure I think it's ask. important for all of us that we do that instead of saying, oh, well, they're just happy. The, I think the question is, Chris, we couldn't bid it out because there, would, there was no cause. So you, but see, my you, question is, is why did we vote on it six years ago? Well, we the, changed, the board action, uh, the board I guess action. we could bring it we back again if you have record. somebody else in mind. Just Why did we change a agent of record? Because we didn't have someone local and someone local. And I think that, that was the key, because mm -hmm. I think it was... That was my first year. That was our first year. That's yeah, that's what I was talking about. I just like year. discussing this. That's right, your first year was my and, first year. And, and, you know, and I'll add on to that mm -hmm. so that I'm not, and nobody thinks I'm looking just at insurance. My issue that I've had with the community care in our schools is the exact same thing. It's out of county. I have always felt that annually we should have local physicians bid that out because we give it free. It doesn't cost us anything at all. There are, are the, school, the, the little med centers in our schools. I mean, we're providing a space. We're providing the students. They're, pay, they're billing the insurances and Medicaid. All I'm saying is I still think that is something uh, that we need to bid out to local physicians. And so I just don't want anyone to think I'm pinpointing insurance or anything. I'm just saying I think it's healthy for our board to do things like this. And, and, and I'd like to see, that, see, I mean, I'd just like to see that done. Well, how about the, 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 Chris, since Sharon and I sit down and, and I'll make a, a report to you what probably the most feasible way of addressing your concern. How's okay, that? well, it's not really a concern, okay. it's a question. Well, no, but I think it is a legitimate. Uh, is, is at least put it back on the table. It may be dire again. Uh, yeah. It may not, but at least open it back. It'll be a local. It'll be somebody around here. 
Uh, and, but let me talk to her, and I'll put it on the agenda for discussion next uh, next okay. week. Okay. That's all. That's all I'm asking. I think it's something uh, to I look think at. That's legitimate. Good question. Okay. New business, annual request to authorize payment of Notre Dame employees for applica applicable professional development. Is there a motion to approve? A motion. To Ms. Approve. Messenger has made the motion to approve. Is there a second? No second? Second. Mr. Hamrick has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Yo, what is this? <laughs> That's why you're here. Still sitting here, Lola. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why am I getting... Uh, we're getting funky stuff on our computer here. What, what, what? I'm getting something that says, are we voting electronically now? No, it's always on there. No, 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 no. That's oh, that. that. Okay. Yeah. What's not right here? No. I got an issue, too. Come look. It's just the A. Annual request to offer. It's, 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 it's what she puts on. It's asking us to cast the vote. Oh, this is pretty cool. Doug would never be able to vote. <laughs> not me either. She's <laughs> 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 well, well, on everything, and you. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's an annual request to authorize payment, and then when we went through the motion and we went through the discussion, it gives us the option to abstain, a, a, a yes vote or no vote. I seriously need my computer. <coughs> I haven't she had a computer for almost a year now. I that's can't even That's the first time I've ever seen that. Listen, I, I knew it has the ability. I need this. Yeah, that's the first time I've ever seen that. And we're not going to do it that way. It's been almost a year. Yeah. Been able to All right. Talk. Is there any discussion? <laughs> yeah. 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 discussion. Well, while we're waiting, well, trying to fix everything, can you tell us what it is? Okay. I told you what. And what do they do for us? But I was going to surprise you with a Christmas gift. I'll take it. Okay, okay. I didn't do anything. I went away. We're going to make a big deal of walking in. We're a pass through. We're just a pass through. Okay. All right. The only way the only way we have approval of you guys doing anything through payroll would be something like this because they don't have contracts with us and things like the rest of our personnel do. So that's right. why she brings it to her. Okay. No further questions. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, that's what broke the wagon. I already voted. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody did. Apparently, we all did. Well, I'm going oh, to like my this. computer like said this. it's not working. We're going to control this from here on in. Apparently, we all voted. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you think. Think. We know it's wrong because Doug voted. We're going to win every vote. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's the one we're on. Hey, correct. Yeah, we're ready to move on. We already voted. Hey, this thing's already yeah. done. Congratulations. Good job, Lola. All right, officially. Wait a minute. Okay, it's all on You were the first you. electronic okay. vote of the Board of Education. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now we can move on to the next one. Okay. Sorry. I'm a, I, 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 well, I still call for the vote, considering okay, that. Yeah. Is there, I is, didn't push the vote. Hey. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> it says it up there. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Moving on. Okay. Out-of-state professional leave requests. Is there a motion to accept the out-of-state professional leave request? So moved. Mr. Second. Hogue has made the motion. Mr. Darty has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. Bus driver promissory notes. Uh, is there a motion to accept the authorization for the bus driver promissory notes for Philip W. Heater and Roberta Murphy? So, so moved. I love it when that happens. Mr. Hamrick, or Mr. Doherty has made the motion and Mr. Hogue has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Washington Avenue parking project. Uh, is there a motion to accept the low bid from Wolf's Excavating for the amount of $128,026.03 for the Washington Avenue project? So moved. Mr. Hogue's made the motion to accept. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Hamrick has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Yes. What, what is, where is this? This isn't about Washington Irving High School. No. This is the one right up the road here. We bought yeah, right behind the right Steve Center. Center. Okay. Oh, okay. That area right there. We bought, remember we bought the houses right, and we, right. we demoed them. And now we're so, going to put a, uh, a okay. This will give parking for some of our WI teachers. And if, if, if they yeah, so. very well could. And then, like, it would be Board of Education parking. So, whoever. Right, right now, I'm just, 
just when uh, we had a PR up there and trying to visit him or or going over there trying to find a parking spot just as a visitor it just it's just a pain so I just having parking for the school would be uh, tremendous so. um, I don't think this is parking for the school it's Washington Avenue and it's for the steam center I am not voting for this because I think that once there's a need right now we have all of this parking up and down the street and behind us that can be utilized for that and I would much rather see something of parking up by WI that can be utilized like you said for visitors and PRO. <coughs> I just don't think we need to do it till the need is a little more. I, I mean I mean there's parking up and down the street every day right beside the steam center and um, I, I'm just not going to vote for this at this time. That's just my vote. Is there a possibility that this could be accessed from both sides? We're just going to be accessed we don't that. Washington we don't Avenue. Know. We don't know. We'd have to that property. We'd have to get the uh, approval. We'd have to get approval. To I mean, I would love it like a key property. fob, like for the teachers. I think there's a big wall. Is it there, Jimmy, on the back of the property? Well, there's going to be a retaining wall. We don't know the property. That's the, so there's to get, not oh, access yeah. to WI is what no. I'm saying. Oh, I think well, they can park a walk I, I just it's don't feel comfortable doing $128,000 and it's not a big need right now. I mean, we've never had any event that lacked parking out here. Now, if that was for Washington Irving Middle School, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Is well, there, you could put Washington Irving Middle School slash Steam Center. Then there's no it, access. It there's not a right away, and there's a wall. They well, have to I go mean, clear up on the block. They have to walk from the parking lot that's up there on the hill now to the school. You that's, know what's the difference between I, I, walking I, there up the hill? I mean, it's broad as it is long. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you know. I guess. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just don't think. I would. I mean, the only thing I would say is because I. Uh, that's exactly right. Uh, it's. It's about the same. You got to walk up either way, one way, and one then way. down the other way. I would just say, and I'll, 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 I'm in favor of it, but I would, I would like to at least, when we let them know that during the day, during school hours, that allow those teachers Absolutely. to park, right. let them know that this parking is for you. Um, yeah. yeah, in fact, we'll. Can, uh, can we do the, like the key fobs like we have out here? And well, we talked talk about that. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I, I really don't. We talked about. Joe's, when he was going over the building, by the way, where is Joe? I, I think it's like Am I the missing parking lot is just like questions? this, and there's I no way to put Oh, it's you. Okay, then answer these questions then. Yeah. yeah. So How, many no How many spaces? How many spaces are there for 120? We never see Joe. We never see Wayne. Ten. I mean, so we're paying tw uh, about 13000 a part. The key fob thing, and how, how's that going to work? Well, uh, right now the design <coughs> is you're going to be, you're going to be yeah. pulling in over the, yeah. the new... Uh, between there, there's not going to be, we're not going to be pulling in and, and parking, you know, side to side. You're going to be pulling in and backing out. Have so we done RCB's parking in. lot yet? I mean, we're, has RCB's parking lot been completed? No, no, it is not. I, I mean, I just don't understand this. We have a new city council in Clarksburg, and I know for certain they own those lots that we're talking about, and, and we should talk to them and put parking there. Because then that would service the school, and it would also service the parents and everybody else that goes to that school. And guess what? We could just flip this around, and if the STEAM Center ever needs any parking, they can use the one up there. I, I mean, the I only, don't know. The only difference I have is I'm not for putting anything more up there next to WI because I hope to get rid of it. But then, I mean, okay, but then don't say this is for WI parking. Well, but but it's still down now, here. The, so once that's over, it's still here. But if it's up there, then it's it's not up there. This, I, I'm, I'm just, I this just think it's terrible. Though. There's not parking at WI's door. It's a dangerous neighborhood. You we know, don't even have a need for this right here, and you're still asking for students and parents and everyone to walk a whole entire block when what they've only wanted is parking right by their door, and that's what the parents have asked for, and everybody that makes it convenient and accessible. And the city now owns about two or three lots right there, and I think we should explore that. You know, we have, we have kicked this around for ever since I, I've been on the board. You know, there, you know, why there's no more parking up at Washington Irving. There was not near that much parking at Washington Irving when it was a high school. When I was there as the principal and the other principal before me, you know, and, you know, I don't understand why we keep debating about buying more property, putting more parking in, because 
bottom line is people always found a place to park. People will always may have to walk a little bit, but now we've added the we tore that house down, we added parking there. Now we've got this, we're gonna add parking there. Uh, we have this building with a parking lot out here. <clears throat> I think we have more parking now for Washington Irving than we've ever had. If in that's the, last, the case, I agree last with you. I'm years. just saying I don't understand. Yeah. It that. was a, when I went there it was a triple A school and every yeah. junior and senior drove and yeah. I don't remember parking issues. You know. I, I agree with all of you guys. I, I, with everything that you're saying, and my only thing is, is first, we've never completed the parking at RCB, which we've already been, been, but we've allocated the money for that, correct? We've discussed it. Yes, there, well, we, it's there allocated. Is, we discussed yeah. it. We don't That's quite have right. it. There wasn't quite enough to do this and that, and the question had arisen in our discussions because I had him in there about the uh, the possibility of putting a new school. And the additional parking, because uh, uh, it appears that this may be the, the highest priority, a new WI up at, at Bird Campus. If indeed we do that, it, it wasn't feasible. Of course, the whole parking scheme would change fairly dramatically. We don't know where the school would be. So there was discussion, and I said, let's do this one, and then we'll further discuss, see how this whole thing shakes out before we do anything additional up there as it relates to parking at uh, Robert C. Bird. Well, okay, I understand that. I'm glad you just explained that. That's very informative. Uh, my other question is this. I believe we don't do any at all, but if we do, it should be up there. If we're going to spend that money, it should be up there. And I know we keep on saying that's a priority, but even as a priority, even if it was accepted, it wouldn't even be submitted until next December. So you're basically talking about three years. More than that three, four oh, years yeah, before yeah. anything would oh, happen. You're, you're right and, and we can't keep on saying in our mind, oh, it's three, you know, we're getting a, we're looking at building a new one. Well, we have four years of students and teachers and everyday education going up there that can't be discounted yeah. their safety. Yeah. Yeah. And well, there's so much parking at Robert C. Bird. It's unbelievable. Well, I don't even care about that now because he just made a lot I, of I mean, sense. He made a lot of sense. If you look in their parking lot, that. he does Their mean. student parking lots, no ways near, got the cars in it that it used to have. Because I used to do traffic control before and after school with the student parking, and then the faculty's got that gigantic parking lot, and they don't park in it. They park all the way around the building, which I've always been opposed to. Yeah. But you know what? That's water under the bridge. They're going to park where they want to park and all. So that big parking lot's available. And then the parking lot up with the tennis court's available. So, you know, I also think this right is now a I think very this time is for us to, need <coughs> to, to sit down with the new city council and come to some agreement sure. uh, with our school systems here <coughs> because I don't feel we were on the right page before. Right. And I think this is a time to sit down and say, hey, you guys own these lots, they're just sitting there, why don't we work together to create parking? Uh, and, and I think that's something we should do instead of just throwing $128,000 back here when it's not required yet. So does the city of Clarksburg, do they own that lot above there? Is that? No, that's a private individual. individual. And they won't, they won't. In between, well, uh, Jimmy, we've, we've discussed mm -hmm. that about that feasibility uh -huh. and, and we're going to continue to explore that because then that would be it, it would be uh, a straight shot a, a straight shot yeah. see that's what i'd like to that, see and, and that's what shot. i that's my goal yeah. Yeah. It'd be a straight right. shot listen i think it, i think at this point we're talking about different things so i think we should call for the vote on this and 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 let it go out the way it needs to go out um how about you just see if they can get access if they come if they get the access well that, that's a back. different piece of property so uh, there's motion on the table at this point in time i'll call for the vote uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Yeah. Motion carries three to two. And I would recommend that uh, Dr. Manchin get with you later to talk two, about three, those other two pieces of property with City Council. Because I would, I would love to see you all the way up and down. Well, we would too. There's been some discussion. Jimmy and I have discussed that. In fact, when we went up there that way, did you yeah. and I, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the people, that would make it one continuous between the Board of Education yeah. and there. Uh, we're going to we're going to continue to explore that. That's a good point. All right, point. that brings us down to personnel matters. Is there a person? Is there a motion to accept the personnel matters as presented by the superintendent? So moved. Mr. Hogue has made the motion to accept. Mr. Doherty has seconded the motion. Yep. Is there any discussion? 
The only thing I only thing I questioned on it was uh, where people have to be on for jury duty. There was two people that was for four weeks, and then there was one I think it was for three months. That's federal. Federal okay. would be the three. Okay. Months. I think in the future, if it's four weeks, it's the whatever court it's going to be in. If you put, yeah, put a little note to circuit, circuit. Yeah, stipulate, and then the other because I kept thinking if these people are going to be there for four weeks. This person. I don't think it's going to have duty court for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you have it for four weeks in state court, six months. In no, but you're not on. The, 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 you have to call in each week. Yeah, you have to call, call in each week. Yeah. 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 You have to be yeah. ready to go. You, you're, you have to be available to serve for four weeks. Yeah. Federal federal jury is six months. A lot of people to get out there. All right. There's a motion on the table. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, this brings us down to the last part of the meeting of the adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Senator Doherty has made the motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Ms. Messenger has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Mr. Hogan? Children of peace, go in peace.